All right. So good morning, everyone. And of course, good morning, future RNs. All right. So ang sarap bang pakinggan nung may RN na na nakatugtong sa inyong mga pangalan. All right. So welcome again to our NLE Masterclass. And of course, this event is brought to you by Health Cares of Philippines, your trusted partner in achieving that hashtag American Dream. My name is Miko. Hindi Vico ha? Miko. And I will be your host for today's event. I would like to introduce to you our Senior Manager for Marketing and Recruitment, Ms. Marivic Doctor, to give us her welcome remarks. Ms. Vicky, good morning. Good morning, Miko. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, future RNs from all over the Philippines. It is so overwhelming and nakaka-boost ng energy kahit na maaga tayo nag-start today to see all of you here. Thank you for joining us today. I hope that you and your family are safe and healthy. Uh, kasi di ba nasa pandemic pa din tayo, we are undergoing this health crisis all over the world. But I am delighted to extend my warm welcome on behalf of Health Carousel Philippines. So just before we get started, I would like also to honor all the healthcare workers who are serving the front lines and risking their own safety for all of us during the, this health crisis. My heartfelt gratitude as well to Dr. Ray Gapus and Dr. Glenda Arquiza for accepting the invitation and to impart their expertise with all of us today. So in today's session, uh, our speakers will uncover the secrets of passing and topping the NLE and share some tips on how we can cope or on how to cope with issues and concerns on the NLE. We hope that you will take advantage of this webinar to learn valuable information and be guided as you prepare to take the NLE next month. Do you next month na? Ambilis. So you can do it, diba? You can be future RNs. Just believe in yourself. Do everything to prepare for the exam. Have a positive mindset. And most importantly, pray. Okay? You can do it. We believe in you. All right? So nursing is truly a noble profession. I hope lahat naman tayo agree with this one, right? I believe uh, all of us will agree with this. Nursing is truly a noble profession that demands hard work, dedication, and an extraordinary amount of compassion and selflessness. Nurses do more actually than care for individuals. They have always been at the forefront of change in healthcare and public health. So now more than ever, the world needs you. Kailangan natin ng nurses. Diba? So I salute and congratulate you in advance for choosing this noble profession. And before I end, please allow me to take this opportunity to mention that this event forms part of Health Carousel Philippines Corporate Social Responsibility or CSR initiatives. So by providing free learning sessions and trainings is one of our commitment in empowering the Filipino nurses like you and helping the nursing community in our country. So once again, warm welcome to all and thank you very much. All right, so thank you very much, Ms. Vicky, for the warm welcome. And of course, like what she mentioned, I salute all healthcare professionals and of course, our future RNs. All right, so without further ado, I would like to introduce to you our very first speaker for this morning, okay? So he is co-listed with Bill Gates and the world's great achievers in the 25th edition of Marquis Who's and Who's in the World. He is an author for Mosby Elsevier and Jones and Bartlett Publishers, USA. He has over 25 years of teaching and administrative experience in test preparations, including graduate and undergraduate nursing programs. He was named one of Go Negocio's first 50 inspiring Filipino entrepreneurs in the Philippine Graphics Magazine's 2006 
Young Leaders of the Philippines. He received the MVP Bossing Award for Education, the Agora Award for Entrepreneurship from the Philippine Market Associ Marketing Association, the SME IT Award for Innovation from the Philippine Internet Commerce Society, the 10 Outstanding Filipino Entrepreneurs from Entrepreneur Magazine, and the Young Market Master for Entrepreneurship from Mansmith and Fielders. He was accepted as a member of the Ernst & Young Entrepreneurship of the Year Academy. Currently, he serves as a trustee of the Philippine Center for Entrepreneurship, or PCP. He is a recipient of two doctorate degrees from two state university, universities in the country, the Ramon Magsaysay Technological University and the Pangasinan State University. He finished his Bachelor of Science in Nursing, cum laude, and Master of Arts in Nursing, summa cum laude, at the University of Santo Tomas. He was a board top notcher in the Philippine Nurse Licensure Exam, where he obtained a rating of 89.20%. He obtained his post-baccalaureate certificate in e-learning design and Master of Education in Learning and Technology at the Pennsylvania State University, where he finished both courses with a grade point average of 4.0. All right, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, future RNs, please welcome Dr. Ray A. Gapos. Thank Good morning, you. Ray. Good morning, Sir Miko. Thank you very much for the very kind and comprehensive introduction. Magandang umaga po sa lahat ng ating RNs to be. Sa aking mga katropa dyan sa La Union, mga katropang dog yun. Ito na po ang iyong katropang G, Mentor Ray, your fact check buddy. Please don't forget to pronounce the check mark in between the words fact and buddy so it doesn't, it sounds well. So before anything else, my session for today would be dealing with how to uncover the secrets of passing and topping the board exam. Okay, so today I will address the nagging question and that is, what do I need to study? Ano ba ang kailangang aralin? Hindi ko napapatagalin. Kailangang malaman nyo to step by step. At take note, first set lang to. We will have more of this in our next series of this events. Okay, so let's move on. So, one, 27 days pa bago mag-board exam. So, ganito pa yung reaction nyo. ba? Ano kaya? Okay? So, pag mga two weeks na, ganito na yung next reaction nyo. Okay? Yan. Ganyan na yung next reaction nyo. <laughs> no? Nagiging ganyan na yung next reaction pag two weeks na lang. At pag one week na lang, di mo pa rin alam mga aralin mo, ayan, ganyan na ang reaction mo. So, at this point in time, ayaw natin ng ganyang reaction. Dapat pag may tear ka, tears ka, sorry, Tears of joy, okay? Let me remind everyone. Uh, siguro nakita niyo yung aking scholastic background. Sasabihin niyo, siguro gustong gusto niya yung nursing. Actually, hindi. Okay? Ang nursing ay wala sa top three choices ko. I originally wanted to be a broadcast journalist. O, di ba? Di sana ako yung nagsasabi ng, di ba? Kung mahusay, ang pagkalap na ebidensya. O, di ba? Mga ganong mga idol natin. <laughs> Okay, so let's begin. Kaya lang ginawa kong nurse ni Lord and I'm an educator primarily. So let's begin with top 10 concepts that you need to focus on in the nurse licensure exam. Let's begin with the first one. Para tayong nasa deal or no deal, meron tayong briefcase. And the bearer of briefcase is I'm a proud mentor of this lady, Melissa Malong, who is the first and only number one top notcher from De La Salle Medical and Health Sciences Institute. And I'm a proud mentor, of course. Mga naging anak-anakan ko yan. She was never an honor student. She's not a cum laude. I just discovered her potential because she's always in front of me in my class. So sabi ng briefcase na dala ni Melissa, ang dapat unang pag-aralan ay ethics. Okay, sabi na isang sudyante. So yan ba yung ano, anak ng bibe? <laughs> Hindi, ethics <yun. laughs> O yan pa din yung daw pag hinawakan, eh, nabubuhay. Ay, nako, iba yun. Huwag yun ang pag-usapan natin. So at this point in time, what are the things that we need to remember about ethics? Now, remember this concept ay naka-thread through. Pag sinabing threaded through, makikita mo yan from test 1 to test 5. Okay? 
So let's have an example. The best way to learn is through having an example. So a terminally ill client is being taken care of by the nurse. Which of the following principles should guide the nurse's response to the client's question, am I dying? Mamamatay na ba ako? Pag millennial nurse daw ang tinanong dyan, ano yung sasagot niya? Sabi niya, oo naman. <laughs> Siyempre naman, hindi ka na ng millennials, napaka-direct, okay? napaka-brief, napaka-short ng kanilang response, pati ng attention span. Okay, anyway, but this point in time, the challenge to answer this question is kailangan alam mo ano ang ibig sabihin ng non-maleficence, veracity, justice, confidentiality. Pag hindi mo na alam yung meaning niyan, nahihirapan na. At hindi lang meaning, dapat alam mo din yung application niyan. So pag tinanong ka ng patient, am I dying? You have to respond with honesty. Pag di mo kayang sagutin with full honesty, you can ask if the patient would want to talk to the doctor so that the doctor could be in a position to explain the details of the patient's condition right in front of him or her. So at this point in time, honesty base, is based on which ethical principle? That's veracity. So as sagot dito, veracity or truth telling. Okay? So, eh, ano naman yung mga ibang principles na yan? So, let's take a quick look at the ethical principles. The first one would be autonomy. Pag sinabing autonomy, freedom to make decisions for oneself. And this freedom would usually involve four different elements. Okay? Ano-ano yung mga elemento na yan? Okay? So, pag sinabi natin na freedom, you have to respect okay, the, the, the position of others especially if their views would be different from you. Example, ngayong pandemic, okay, yung iba ayaw magpabakuna, respect natin. Kasi iyon ang kanilang a sense of autonomy, manifestation ng kanilang sense of autonomy. Then, ability to determine personal goals. Ngayong pandemic, ano ba yung personal goals natin? To be fully protected from the coronavirus. So, that would determine our degree of expressing our freedom. And then, complete understanding of choice. Kailangan, inform ka. Kailangan alam mo yung facts, like yung side effects ng gamot. Tinanong mo muna. So, those would help you make an informed decision. And an informed decision will definitely enhance your sense of freedom. And that's based on the principle of autonomy. And then, of course, ang pinaka-importante, the freedom to implement choice. Kailangan pro-choice ka pag ikaw ay nagpa-practice ng autonomy. Kung ano yung napag-desisyonan mo, yun ang gagawin mo. Okay? The second one, here's an example. Um, maraming ayaw magpabakuna because like um, Miss Luz Ligaspi, who seems to be of Filipino descent, na nagpabakuna ng Moderna sa Amerika, ay nagkaroon ng immune thrombocytopenia. That's previously known as idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, which is a form of blood disorder. Yan, nagkaroon siya ng bleeding all throughout the subcutaneous parts of her skin that uh, occurred all throughout the body. So hindi lang naman yan unique sa Moderna. Even sa AstraZeneca, ang problema naman, clotting. But in the most recent data, ang nakikita natin, 21 lang out of 2.1 million ang nagkaroon ng clotting. Therefore, that's 0.0001. So I have to count kasi apat na zero yun. 0.001. Wala pang 1%. So when you decide to have the vaccine despite the risk, it's because of your sense of autonomy. Ginusto mo yun. At yun naman pag mo, ano ba ang mas mahalaga? Yung side effects or rare side effects o yung benefit na maprotektahan ka sa COVID. If you decide, okay, to have the vaccine dahil nakikita mo maganda ito para sa kalasugan at ito ang advocacy ng mga nurses katulad natin di ba they want to do good by encouraging people to have their vaccines that's an example of beneficence okay in essence in a sinabing benefits to act in the best interest of others encourage mo sila ang unang-una, importante dyan, alam mo, Sir Ray, yes, I think we lost you. Okay. So, risk to benefit ratio. Am I okay now, Sir Miko? Yes, sir. You're back. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, at this point in time, pag ginawa natin yan, 
that's based on the principle of beneficence. Okay. The sec the third principle is non-maleficence. Do no harm. Actually, kakambal ito ng beneficence. Okay. So part ng non-maleficence is not allowing harm to happen through neglect. For example, nakita mo na na nahulog yung karayom sa kama, hindi mo pati nanggal, so natusok yung pasyente. That's not a good practice because that's not based on non-maleficence. Sabi ng non-maleficence, huwag kang maging neglectful sa mga ginagawa mo so that you don't put the patient in a situation where harm could potentially result. Okay? So, next, paternalism, which simply means acting in a fatherly and motherly manner. So, at this point in time, sabi nga natin, mga lalaki, they act in a fatherly manner. Yung mga babae, they act in a motherly manner. But our generation has been so tolerant. There are now males who act in a more motherly manner than females. But that's perfectly fine. That's typical of the new generation nowadays. And then we have justice, which simply means equitable distribution of resources. And that would mean pag yung bakuna na ibigay ng pantay-pantay sa lahat ng nangangailangan, that's justice. Ulitin natin ha. Pagka hinayaan mong mamili ng bakuna yung pasyente, that's autonomy. Pagka nag-advocate ka na dapat magpabakuna yung pasyente, you're doing what is good, that is beneficence. Pagka yung pasyente hindi mo hinarm, kunwari, at tinanggal mo yung nahulog na needle para hindi maharm yung pasyente, that's non-maleficence. Ngayon, pagka lahat na bigyan ng bakuna, nagkaroon sila ng equal chance, that's based on the principle of justice. Eh, ano naman yung fidelity? Fidelity means remaining faithful or keeping commitments and promises. So, pag nag-i-inject ka ng bakuna at biglang nagutom ka, nagpaalam ka to take a five-minute break, make sure after five minutes, balik ka sa pasyente mo. If you keep your promise, that's reflective of the principle of fidelity. Pero, hindi lahat ng ang pangalan, fidel, ay nagpa-practice ng fidelity. In fact, some of those who are named fidel, would usually have infidelity. <laughs> That's just an analysis. Okay? Next, we have virtues. So when we uh, talk about virtues, these are behaviors showing high moral standards, compassion, trustworthiness, and integrity. Now, integrity is a reflection of your character. So don't mind public perception because who you are deep inside you, your character that shines through is the true measure of your integrity. Integrity is not measured by public perception because people nowadays through social media could just destroy your reputation. So uh, care less about your reputation. Care more about your character because that's the true essential reflection of your integrity as a nurse. Integrity means you are doing the right thing even if nobody is looking. Isa yan sa dapat yaman mo. Okay? And of course, confidentiality, which means to maintain privacy, which is more difficult to maintain now because we have the Data Privacy Act. Kasi nga, meron ng social media, madaling mag-cut and paste. So the second important concept that I'd like to highlight, ang ating bearer ng briefcase number two is Benedict Bunal. He's a Manya Cum Laude graduate ng UP, one of my scholars. Okay. Ano maganda dito kay Benedict? Dalawa ang lisensyang nakuha niya in a span of two months. In fact, naunang lumabas yung NCLEX niya bago yung NLE. Mas nauna siya naging USRN. And the Ladderize program I created for him help him out. He's now in the United States. At syempre, ako ang proud mentor. He was number two in the board. He was a manya cum laude. And now, may dalawa siyang lisensya. Okay? RN sa Philippines and USRN. Kaya mo rin yan. Hindi mo kailangang maging ganyan ang credentials. Mamaya papakita ko sa'yo, meron akong isang minentor. Okay? Nakapasa siya ng limang licensure exam sa limang iba't ibang bansa with just one ladderized program. Okay. So dun sa ating briefcase na daladala -dala ni Ben, ang kanyang sinasabi ay well. Okay? This is gonna be expected. Kung sa Miss Universe nga eh, di ba? Ang Q&A nila puro about COVID eh. <laughs> so kailangan kasi, sir, bakit expected yan? Eh kasi di ba ang common basis naman ng mga questions ay yung common causes of mortality and morbidity sa Pilipinas. At this point in time, nakafocus tayong lahat dyan sa COVID. At mamaya, may sikreto uli akong isishare sa inyo. Let's take a look at this question. A nurse is preparing to provide a health education class to a group of community residents who are at risk for infection for the coronavirus. Which of the following statements should the nurse include in her information dissemination? Select all that apply. 
Paano mo sasagutin yan? Alam mo, mahirap dito. Kasi meron kang anim na options. Okay? At kailangan mapili mo lahat ng tama to get one point. Actually, kinatatakutan to ng mga estudyante. Sa akin, hindi. Actually, ito yung paborito kong type ng exam nung estudyante pa ako. Wala pang sata nun. Ano meron nun? True or false. Ang select all that apply question is just plain and simple true or false na pinagsama-sama. So ang gagawin mo lang, pag nakakita ka ng select all that apply, ask yourself, is option A true or is it false? So if it's true, choose it. If it's false, then don't choose it. Ganun lang kadali yun. But definitely, kailangan armed ka pa rin with concepts. So, bago natin sagutin to, kailangan meron tayong mga konsepto about COVID. We begin with the case definition according to the World Health Organization. You are called a suspect if you are a person under investigation. You are considered a probable case if your test is inconclusive or not yet available. And you are considered a confirmed case if your laboratory test has confirmed that you are indeed infected with the virus. Okay? So, ano ba problema? Um, yung mga nagkakaroon ng mild symptoms or initially yung iba nga positive pero walang symptoms. Ang tawag doon, asymptomatic. ba diba? <laughs> Sa Pilipino, ang tawag doon, asymptopangit. Ano doon yung asymptopangit? Yung nagmamaganda at siya na lang ang hindi nakakaalam na pangit siya. <laughs> Sorry for my terminologies, guys. Just making an analysis. So meron tayong apat na classification ng COVID pneumonia, which is actually the most common complication of coronavirus infection. So you have mild, moderate, severe, or critical. Okay. Pag sinabing mild, okay? So mild, yan yung mga pasyente na symptomatic without evidence of pneumonia or hypoxia. Hindi nahihirapang huminga. Walang fever. Okay? Pero, pero, okay, meron na silang beginning symptoms. Like for example, body malay, body ache. Okay. So yun yung mga symptoms sila na very mild. Pero wala namang lagnat. So you treat them with isolation. Ang problema sa COVID, yung treatment nagiging psychosocial problem din. Bakit? E di ba if you isolate the patient, eventually the patient is all alone. So they develop depression. Feeling of being so alone. And then eventually... Uh, naaawa sila sa sarili nila. So, they could be potential suicidal clients. Okay? Wala tayong magagawa. Yun ang treatment. Diba? Usually, mandatory isolation, 10 to 14 days. And then, symptomatic treatment. Ano ibig sabihin symptomatic treatment? Kung ano yung symptom, yun ang i-treat. May fever, give paracetamol. Okay? And then, why are antibiotics not given? Remember, a coronavirus infection is caused by a virus. Your antibiotics would usually address bacterial infection. However, Minsan, nagkakaroon ng uh, coexistent pathology pag nagkaroon ng coronavirus, nagkakaroon din ng bacterial pneumonia. Pero huwag gagamitin ang antibiotics early on pag mild lang ang sakit because of the potential development of resistance. The second level is your moderate disease or pneumonia. <laughs> Natatawa ako kasi share ko sa inyo, naalala ko yung estudyante ko. Pronunciation niya dyan sa moderate, mudirit. <laughs> Naalala ko tuloy yung mga ano, yung mga magagaling na uh, spa attendants, okay, somewhere in the southern part of the country. Pag nagtatanong ka, pag nagpamasage ka, tatanong ka, sir, anong gusto mo? Soup o mudirit? <laughs> Tapos pag, pag tinanong mo, anong difference ang soup at mudirit? Sabi, anong gusto mo, sir? Soup, soupin pa o mudirit suna? <laughs> Of course, that is actually a joke. Okay, shout out naman dyan. Hi to Cynthia from the University of the Cordilleras. Welcome to the class. Of course, sinatawag natin moderate pneumonia pag merong signs and symptoms of pneumonia yung pasyente. Fever, cough, dyspnea, fast breathing. But wala siyang signs ng severe pneumonia. So walang intercostal retractions. Okay, walang labored breathing. Okay, wala siyang severe shortness of breath. But Okay, the um, oxygen saturation is usually above 90 on room air. So, importante may pulse oximeter na ginagamit ang pasyente. Kasi dito malalaman kung kailan mo itatakbo sa ospital yung pasyente. Usually, pag above 90 yan, okay, dun sa guidelines ng Centers for Disease Control, pag 92 to 94, you just need to monitor the patient. Pero once na bumaba, Nang below 90, the patient should be on the way now to the hospital. Huwag nang antayin bumaba pa. Kasi pag bumaba, less than 85, that is 
the critical level already. Okay? Minsan, hindi na siya compatible with life. So once again, the treatment for moderate would be treat the patient by isolating the patient, symptomatic treatment, monitor, and this time, pag meron ng bacterial infection, administer antibiotics. Pag severe pneumonia, okay, meron fever, cough, dyspnea, fast breathing, and any one of these, merong respiratory rate na more than 30, then severe respiratory distress, characterized by intercostal reduction, severe shortness of breath, and then the patient would have an oxygen saturation below 90 on room air. At this point in time, and treatment should be immediate administration of oxygen. Ang level 1 oxygenation ay ginagamit yung nasal cannula. Okay? Pag more than 10 liters per minute na uh, tataas na yon at ang usually gagamitin na yung mask and then your uh, non-rebreathing mask and then eventually your high flow nasal oxygen nasal cannula. So pataas ng pataas, pag hindi na ka nakayanan, mapunta ka na sa critical, then you'll get intubated, then naka-attach ka na sa respirator okay? or ventilator. And then, of course, you will need pulse oximeter monitoring and closely monitoring the patients for a development of other complications, okay? So, uh, after ng severe level, anong nagkakaroon tayo? Pwede magkaroon ng critical disease, okay? Yung critical disease, merong tatlong um, accompanying complications. Pwede ang adult respir acute respiratory distress syndrome, pwede rang sepsis, or systemic infection, or pwedeng septic shock. Okay, anong gagawin? How would you know that the patient is having ARDS when the patient develops hypoxemic failure within one week of pneumonia? Paano yun malalaman? Again, kailangan mo ng pulse oximeter. And of course, ABG as a confirmatory test, arterial blood gas analysis. Then the chest x-ray would usually reflect opacities that is indicative of the presence of infiltration in the lungs. Now, take note that eventually the patient's oxygen level would fall, okay? And this is the time na yung ventilator mo kailangan itaas ang oxygen level, okay? So, minsan 40 liters per minute para ma-achieve mo yung above 95 oxygen saturation, which is considered as normal. So, at this point in time, you'll have invasive mechanical ventilation, meaning naka-attach sa respirator machine or sa ventilator ang pasyente. Then, pwede rin magkaroon ng critical uh, disease na sepsis, ang complication. In which case, what happens? There's gonna be multiple organ dysfunction characterized by decreased level of consciousness, decreased heart, uh, increased heart rate, low oxygen saturation, decreased urine output, then acidosis and hyperbilirubinemia or jaundice. So pag nanilaw yung pasyente, pwede it's because of COVID sepsis, okay? The treatment would definitely be administration of oxygen and fluids. Now, paano kung yung sepsis nag-progress into septic shock? Now, the mark of a septic shock would be persistent hypotension, sobrang baba ng blood pressure, despite volume resuscitation. So at this point in time, kailangan na natin ng vasopressors to maintain the minimum a mean arterial pressure of 65. Anong example ng vasopressors? Dopamine. So kailangan mo na yon para ma-maintain yung blood pressure ng pasyente. And of course, the immediate treatment, ang priority, huwag kakalimutan, would be administration of crystalloids. Pag sinabi natin crystalloids, that's gonna be your normal saline solution or D5LR administered at a rate of 250 to 500 ml in the first 15 to 30 minutes to jumpstart fluid resuscitation. Pero kung ako ang tatanungin, Ano dyan sa mga interventions na yan ang basic pag nasa community? O yan, integrate natin ang CHN. Well, eto. Pulse oximeter and of course, your thermometer. You have to monitor the fever and monitor the oxygen saturation. Kasi pag bumaba below 90 ang oxygen saturation, you are supposed to be on your way to the hospital. Ngayon, Ang importante, alam mo ang normal. Ang normal oxygen saturation, 95 to 100% at room air. Kailangan mong i-monitor pag 91 to 94% at room air. Hindi pa kailangan talaga ang oxygen at this level. Pero once na bumaba ng 90 and below, that's the time. Oxygen now is a must and you are supposed to be on your way to the hospital because when you reach 85 and below, that's considered a critical level. Ngayon, bakit ako in love sa topic na to? Okay? Sagutan natin yung question. Let's begin. Okay? Sabi dito, Suob destroys the coronavirus in the body. Hindi. 
Ang suob is a form of treatment. It is just given because you have an inflammatory reaction in your airways. And your suob would liquefy the secretions. Sa Ilocano, ang suob is literal suob. Ang ini-inhale mo yung smoke coming from herbal leaves sa probinsya. Dito, social ang suob. Rice cooker ang ginagamit. May Vicks Bay Purab pa. Okay? So we put an X to letter A. Post-COVID patients develop lifelong immunity. Wala pang pag-aaral na nagsasabing may lifelong immunity because at the moment, may mga reinfections pa rin. Isolation of the patient is both an intervention and psychosocial concern. Yes, we said that a while back. COVID-19 is a curable disease. No, there's no specific cure. We only have treatment. Ano ba difference yung dalawa? A cure will target the main cause of the problem, which is the coronavirus. At the treatment would deal with minimizing the symptoms of the condition. So what we have at this point would just be treatments. Wala pa tayong cure that's specific to the virus. Pulse oximeter is an essential monitoring tool. Yes, oxygen toxicity can be a complication of too much oxygen. Yes, and this occurs when you're receiving more than 50% oxygen. And how would you know when my oxygen toxicity? The patient will have vertigo, nausea, decreased level of consciousness, and then eventually the patient's condition would be more difficult for the physician to address. Okay. Bakit ko yan? Sobrang gusto yan topic na yan. Well, I survived critical COVID pneumonia. So if you want to know my story, I have a three-part video. I discussed everything from the characteristics of the virus to the symptoms, to the treatment, to the home rehabilitation. Please do drop by at my YouTube channel entitled Capus Mentors. And don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button so that you'll get notified whenever I upload new videos, which I do three times a week. Okay. Number three, ang ating briefcase bearer ay si Kate Aliza Aquino Principe na top three sa board. Minentor ko yan from Gordon College, Olonga po City. Congratulations ulit, Iha. One of the prettiest ladies I've mentored. Sabi naman ng briefcase niya, postpartum psychosis. Ang mga nababaliw dahil sa panganganak. Ito daw yung opposite ng nababaliw dahil sa pag-aasawa. <laughs> Do you believe that love is a form of mental illness? Alam niyo may mga pag-aaral na nagsasabing yung characteristic daw ng brain ng naiin love ay the same ng characteristic ng brain ng may obsessive compulsive disorder. Kaya nga, ang implication ng study na yon, love is a form of mental illness. Siguro nga, kasi may tinatawag tayong nababaliw sa pag-ibig. Oh, di ba? Mga millennials eh, mahilig sa ganyan. Okay, anyway. Let's talk about postpartum psychosis. The best way, again, is to have a simple question. Let's talk about this. Which of the following treatment interventions are appropriate for postpartum psychosis? Select all that, apply ulit. Again, sinasabi ko sa inyo kanina, hindi mahirap ang SATA. Ang gagawin mo lang, ask yourself whether the statement is true or false. Because a SATA question is just a clustering of true or false items. Ganun lang strategy niyan. O, oh, bago natin sagutin to. Let's review some facts. Let's make use of a functional concept. Now, what's a functional concept? Iyan po ay yung method na aking create when I did my master's in the States. So functional concepts method is unique to the Ray Gapu system. It's a registered trademark. Pag sinabi natin functional concept, it could be a word, a sentence, a phrase that gives you a sense of direction on how to answer a question. So functional concept number one, postpartum psychosis is a psychiatric emergency. Yes. Hindi siya pwede sa OPD emergency because sometimes the patient would have delusions okay ano daw ba yung delusion sabi ng isang estudyante ko yun daw yung pinapahid mo bago ka matulog di ba bago matulog you apply delusion <laughs> okay of course that's a joke delusion is a false belief okay and sometimes in patients with postpartum psychosis yung delusions nila kinakain nila yung anak nila kasi namamali sila ng paniniwala dun sa ipinanganak nilang bata so because of that that's why it's considered a psychiatric emergency. Now, it's also more common in primary pras, yung mga first-time mothers. And the onset is between the third to the tenth day after delivery. Paano malalaman na may postpartum psychosis ang isang pasyente? Look for the three days. The first one, disorientation. Hindi na niya alam kung nasan siya. Hindi na niya kilala sino ang kausap niya. And sometimes worse, pati sarili niya nakakalimutan na niya. Derealization feeling of strangeness towards the environment. Okay? So, yan yung definition. Hindi niya alam kung nasan siya. Depersonalization, feeling of strangeness about oneself. Sometimes they would say, I feel like I'm 
a piece of ice melting under the sun. That's depersonalization. Okay? Now, pag meron itong tatlong D na to, so chances are may postpartum psychosis. Now, ano ang drug of choice? Monotherapy. Ano ibig sabihin ng monotherapy? Yun lang yung nag-iisang gamot na pwede mo nang ibigay sa may postpartum psychosis. And the most effective is lithium. Pero alam nyo ba, just a trivia, ang lithium nang nadiskubriyan ni J.A.R. Fidson noong 1800s, iyan ay ginamit as salt substitute because lithium is a salt. But it's the type of salt that needs to combine with sodium. Kailangan niya sumakay sa sodium and it needs to be diluted in water for it to be exclusively excreted by the kidneys. Therefore, pag ang pasyente nagtitake ng lithium, kaya kailangan mo ng normal to high sodium diet, which simply means 3 grams to 10 grams of sodium, and then 3 liters of fluids per day. Okay, ngayon, ang lithium ay accidental lang na nakita na meron pala siyang effect sa bipolar disorder. So ginamit na siya ngayong treatment for mania. Okay, so ginamit na rin na monotherapy for postpartum psychosis. Okay, bakit ba nagkakaroon ng postpartum psychosis? Well, ayon sa mga pag-aaral, ang number one risk factor ay family history of bipolar disorder. Kaya nga lithium ang a monotherapy drug of choice, or previous psychotic episode. These are the most significant risk factor to postpartum psychosis. So ang tanong, pwede ba sir magbigay gano, ngayon ng ano, antipsychotic pag nakita na may history? Ups! Pag hindi nagmanifest ng psychosis ang pasyente, never tayo nagbibigay ng psych antipsychotic as a form of prophylaxis or prevention. Diba? It's always a treatment when the patient is already manifesting a symptom. So anong mga manifestations ang postpartum psychosis? Suicidal thoughts. Okay? Minsan nakikita natin na yung pasyente gusto magpakamatay. Ops! Lahat ng suicidal indicators, kay thoughts, kay statements, kay actions, you have to take it seriously. Huwag masasabi niya hindi tutuloy yan. No, 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 no. The basic principle for suicide is you have to treat them seriously. And the most at risk suicidal patients are the elderly. According to research, one out of every two or 50% of those who attempt suicides who are 60 years old and above eventually become successful in their first attempt. So pag pinapili ka sa board exam, which of the following clients is most at risk? Hanapin mo lang yung elderly. Mm, dumadali, di ba? Next, hallucinations. Okay, false sensory perception in the absence of a real external stimuli. May naririnig na wala namang dapat. May nakikita na wala namang dapat. Na itong symptom na ito, aminin na natin, nung estudyante tayo, pinaglalaroan natin. Okay? The moment we see a patient with schizophrenia as diagnosis, ang unang tanong natin, may naririnig ka bang mga boses? O, di ba? Yung pasyente sasagot naman, meron yung boses mo. <laughs> well, I enjoy following up students at the National Center for Mental Health when I was still a clinical instructor okay, at UST. So at this point in time, ano naman yung agitation? Agitation means anxiety with restlessness. Okay? So yung agitated patients, lakad ng lakad. Bakit? Anong problema sa agitation? Anxiety. E ano ba yung anxiety? Is that a condition? Is that a, a treatable psychosocial concern? Di ba yung anxiety? Yun yung reaction ng mga kasambahay pag nareceive yung kanilang uh, uh, sweldo ng maaga. Di ba? Ang sayate. Ang sayate. <laughs> That's just a joke, of course. And then rapidly changing mood. The patient would change from being brightly, okay? interested to one who is anhedonic. Anhedonia means lack of interest in pleasurable things including sex. So kung ang boyfriend mo o girlfriend mo hindi mahilig sa sex, may anhedonia. Anhedonia is typical of schizophrenia. Kaya wag kang makipagrelasyon sa may tendency mag schizophrenic <laughs> Otherwise, hindi niya ma-appreciate ang mga gusto niyong gawin. And then E, erratic and unusual behavior. Okay. So all of this now characterized your postpartum psychosis. Balikan natin ngayon yung tanong. I-apply natin yung pag-aralan natin. Select all that apply. Outpatient treatment, sabi natin kanina, di ba hindi? Psychiatric emergency. So we put an X. That's a false statement. Prophylaxis with antipsychotics for the first pregnancy, sabi natin, hindi natin ginagamit ang antipsychotic as a prophylactic treatment. Okay? Pag may symptoms, saka binibigay. Okay. That's false. So that's also an X. 
Electroconvulsive therapy. Now, electroconvulsive therapy is effective for mood disorder. So my mood disorder ba sa postpartum psychosis meron? So we put a check, lithium carbonate. Yes, risperidone is an atypical antipsychotic which is given to minimize delusions and hallucinations in patients with psychosis. So it's a check. And so the answers are CDE. Okay. Now, number four. Ang bearer ng ating briefcase number four, ang aking mga favorite na mentor. So, we have my first back-to-back -back number one in the board, Faith Rotagenis from University of Santo Tomas and Melissa Malong from De La Salle. Magkasunod na number one. And then, of course, Benedict Bunal and, of course, Alex. Okay, yung apat na yan, mga bright students. Okay? Okay. At ang number four ay care of the newborn. Especially, pag nagpiprepare ka na para sa For example, test 1 and test 2. So you expect sa basic concepts, meron yung mga care of the newborn, care of the postpartum patient. Okay. So let's talk about babies. Alam nyo ba, interesting pag-usapan ng mga babies kasi may mga bagay na mas marami sa kanila kaysa sa ating adults. Example, babies have more bones, about 300. Adults have 206. Why is that so? Because the babies have yet to fuse their bones together. Ah, Hiwahiwalay pa ang bones nila. Kaya mas marami ang bilang. Okay? Pero mas matibay ang bones ng mga adult. Pero hindi yan pag-uusapan natin ngayon. Pag-uusapan natin, saan ba nanggagaling ang physical and psychological characteristic ng newborn? Uh, galing yan sa mga magulang. 50% galing sa nanay, 50% galing sa tatay. So for example, si Brad Pitt at si Jessica Alba, magpakasal. 50% ng itsura ng anak galing kay Brad, 50% galing kay Jessica. So ano anak nila? Di ba? Apologies, we're just making an analysis. Ngayon, pag ang nagpakasal naman si Jennifer Love Hewitt at si Toby Maguire, di ba? Ganito ang itsura, okay? Pag nag-combine, 50% galing sa nanay, 50% galing sa tatay, ganito itsura na anak, o di ba? Dito yata nag-umpisa nag yung mga lahi ng suicidal. Sir, bakit suicidal? Tamo, o, oh, na ang haba-haba ng chin niya, okay? Pag namulot yan, nang nahulog niyang bariya, chances are matutusok niya sa nilin. <laughs> Kaya ang tawag dyan ay suicidal. Anyway, <laughs> Paano naman pag ang nagpakasal ay si JC at Beyonce? Aba mga hari train na ng music scene 'yan. Pero dito yata nagmula yung lahi ni ano eh <laughs> ni Alan K. Kasi pag nagcombine tong dalawa, ganito yung anak nila. 50% from the mother. <laughs> 50% from the mother. 50% from the father. <laughs> How are you guys? Are you are you enjoying at this point? Okay, time. Shout out now to Desiree RN2022, ang kanyang peg. And of course, so to Mariela Montaner. Ayan naman, nagsha-shout out, shout out tayo in between. Okay, yes. Sabi nila, yes po. Okay. <laughs> Lahat ng mga tinatakal ko ngayon, nandoon sa PDF file. Bibigay sa inyo yan or naibigay na, check your email, please. Sabi ko nga, dito sa mga sessions na to, hindi kami madamot. Antayin nyo pa yung marami naming sessions, you'll get more materials from us. Okay, let's move on. Okay? <laughs> let's try answering a sample question. Ito na. After the delivery of a newborn, the highest priority of the nurse is to A. Suction the mouth with a bulb syringe. B. Suction the nose with a bulb syringe. C. Wipe off secretions from the mouth and nose. D. Put the baby on the mother's abdomen. O, sige nga, itype nyo nga kung ano sagot nyo dito. Tignan ko nga kung tama kayo. Sige, itype nyo sa ating uh, chat box. Okay. So, marami, okay, uh, nagta-type, tapos ang sagot, okay, Put on the baby on the mother's abdomen. Yung iba, marami din ang A, marami din ang B. Okay. Lalo na yung produkto ng henerasyon ko. Yung produkto ng henerasyon ko. Pinag-aawa yan yung A tsaka B. Di ba? Kasi nung una, ano ba una yung sasaction? Mouth or nose? Nag-create pa ng code. M-A-N. Mouth and nose. So mauna ang mouth. Okay. Pero tignan natin kung yun nga ang tamang sagot. O, di ba? Walang unifying answer eh. O, iba-iba kayo. <laughs> Pinili nyo naman lahat ng letra eh. Nakakatawa naman itong mga tala. Sige, si Annalyn, si Ian, si Jericho, si Christine, si Mitzi. Iba-iba yung sagot. Okay? <laughs> Depende daw sa yakap. Ano ba yan? Unang yakap. Okay, now take note class. Kailan mo gagamitin yung konsepto ng unang yakap? Kung yung tanong ay base doon sa programa o nasa konteksto ka ng CHN. Pero kung nasa konteksto ka ng clinical practice, ayan, hospital-based, kailangan evidence-based ang iyong sagot. Okay. Sabi ng guidelines from the Neonatal Resuscitation Program 
NRP recommends against oral nasopharyngeal suctioning with a bulb syringe after birth. So ayaw nang ipasuction after birth ang mouth and nose. So yung nagsagot ng AEB, sorry. Yung akala mo sigurado kang tama, sigurado mali, o wag na kayo mag-away. Di ba? Ba't naging ganun, sir? Kasi nagbabago ang practice. Bakit? Kasi evidence suggests that suctioning can stimulate the vagus nerve, which can lead to bradycardia. So, more harm pag sinasuction natin ng bata. Ba't ba ba kasi pinapangialaman? May natural clearing ability ang mga bata. Okay? Para nila maklear ang kanilang airway passages. Tayo lang ang nagmamarunong na nagbabalb syringe at nagsasuction. Okay? Now, harmful pala yan, sabi ng evidence. Therefore, there was no difference in the respiratory rate between those that have suctioning and those that have mere wiping of the mouth and the nose within the first 24 hours of birth. Therefore, pag tinanong ka, balik tayo sa question na yun, ano ngayon ang tamang sagot? Hindi na suction the mouth. Hindi na suction the nose. Wipe of secretions from the mouth and nose. Congratulations sa mga sumagot ng letter C, Princess E and Dave, Nicole, Jeanette, okay, and dami-dami. O, CC, Mary Ann, okay. O, di ba, Jennifer, Maybelline, congratulations, William, lahat kayo. O, tama daw sila. Yay, pang board top na tsaka. Halika na, mentor kita para maging number one. Okay, so let's move on. So, ang sagot, therefore, is letter C. They're learning. O, di ba, nakita niyo yung mga minentor ko na puro Cum laude, manya cum laude, class valedictorian. Ito estudyante, ordinary student. Isang program lang, lima ang ipinasa. Pumasa na NCLEX RNC, GFNS, Prometric Saudi, Prometric Qatar, Saudi Council Test. Saan ka pa? And this lady, Rosalind Ann Victorino, okay, always updates me on Viber. Sir, nakapasa na naman ako. Ginamit ko yung notes mo. Ginamit ko yung tinuro mo sa akin. Okay? So, briefcase number five contains this information. Okay? Ano kaya ang kailangang pag-aralan? Briefcase number five, breast cancer. Eto na. Huwag niyong kakalimutan yung mga oncology conditions, lalo na sa test three and test four. Okay? Somebody actually asked me, Sir, is frequent fondling of the breast a risk factor to breast cancer? Sabi, yun daw bang uh, paghawak ng suso na frequent ay nakakakos ng breast cancer? Okay. Minsan nakakasakit yun. Pero actually, mas nasasaktan ka pa nga kung ang pinaglalaroan, hindi yung breast, pero yung puso mo. Diba? Mga lalaki. Diba? Kaya nga yung kaibigan ko, ang moto, ang sinasabi niya sa mga lalaki, huwag paglalaroan ang puso ng babae kasi isa lang yan. Pero ang suso daw pwede kasi dalawa naman. <laughs> of course, that's just a joke. <laughs> moto, of, moto for the day daw <laughs> Oy, wag, wag niyo i-adapt 'yon. Okay, now to answer the question. <laughs> risk factor daw ba pag finandle yung breast mo sa sa <laughs> breast cancer? Hindi. Kahit ifandle yan with the fingers or ifandle with the tongue habang kumakanta ng la 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 la. la. <laughs> hindi pa rin hindi pa rin siya risk factor. Okay? So, wag mong sabihin na dahil fina-fundal yung breast mo, kaya ka nagka-cancer. So, let's talk about breast cancer as a condition. So, we begin with an update. Now, according to the American Cancer Society, dati circular lang yung movement ng pag-perform uh, ng self-breast exam. Ngayon, nagkaroon na ng wedge um, style at meron na rin tayong top to bottom style. Oh, masaya yung mga nasa LGBT, top to bottom. <laughs> Okay, the best time or the best position, don't forget this class, the best position for doing your self-breast exam is lying down, okay, and putting a pillow underneath the area to be examined. Parang yan nasa picture. The second would be, you can do this while standing in front of the mirror with the arms on the hips, okay, but you never perform self-breast exam while seated. Why is that so? it's less accurate, especially for patients who are obese. Because sometimes for obese patients, the breast becomes continuous with the abdomen. <laughs> Hindi mo alam kung nakakapamo ay breast o abdominal fat. Diba? O umami na tayo. <laughs> Yung mga nagmumuka ng butan ding kasi hindi na po nagdadayet. <laughs> Tawa ng tawa sila Mirzan, saka sila Nuranya. Hala, sige. Rona, okay. 
nakaka-identify kayo o mas maganda na yan, di ba? At least, pagka masyado malaki ang breast, may pagmamalaki. Kung baga, may future. O, eh, paano pag yung wala? Ah, pag small yung breast. Hmm. Kawawa ka naman, di ba? Paano daw ba malalaman? Kasi ang self-breast exam, this is indicated, you should start doing this by the time you reach the age of 20. Question. So why do we have to wait for age 20 to do self-breast exam? Because the contention is, by age 20, dapat fully developed na ang breast. Mm, yung mga 20 years old dyan, at wala pang nakikita. Kawawa ka naman. Paano mo malalaman kung fully developed daw yung breast o hindi? Bumili ka ng ice cream, yung nasa cone, okay? Dilaan mo, ha? Pag tumulo yung ice cream, dumiretso sa paa mo. <laughs> Ibig sabihin, walang sumalo. <laughs> Ikaw ay miyembro ng Tabla Incorporated, babaeng flat sa harap, flat sa likod. Kawawa naman ang boyfriend mo. Walang makapa sa wing palad. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, oh, Di ba? Okay. Huwag na nga yun ang pag-usapan natin. Okay. Balik tayo sa self-breast exam. Okay? <laughs> miyembro ng Tabla Incorporated. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> pag pinag-usapan natin ang self-breast exam, let's have a sample question. The best time to perform self-breast examination for premenopausal and postmenopausal women is a switch of the following times. Dalawang grupo tong pinag-uusapan dito sa tanong na to, kaya tricky to. Premenopausal ibig sabihin niregla pa, postmenopausal ibig sabihin hindi na niregla. Nalalako tuloy yung kapitbahay namin. No, no, nag-turn 16 years old siya, sabi niya sa nanay niya, Nay, sige na, payagan mo na ako magsuot ng bra. Ay, nako, hindi pwede, sabi ng nanay niya. Nay, 16 years old na ako eh, payagan mo na ako magsuot ng bra, sabi ng nanay. Boy, et tumigil ka. <laughs> Kaya pala ayaw payagan magsuot ng bra. Ay, boy pala siya. Okay, now, pag pinag-usapan ang self-breast exam, one of the most common concept that's being asked, pero misinterpreted, ay kailan mo gagawin ang self-breast exam? O, oh, naging select all that apply. Dati isang multiple choice question lang yan. Paano pag ginawang select all that apply? Let's call in functional concepts. Patulong tayo. Okay, the first functional concept. The best time to do breast self-exam is a week after your monthly period. Pay particular attention to the keyword after. So, kung natapos yung menstruation mo at day 7, doon ka sa day 7, mag-count ng one week. Okay? Kasi ang, ang keyword is after your monthly period. Okay? Ngayon, the best time to do breast self-exam is two weeks after the start of your month, monthly period. Ano naman tong version na to? Kung ang ginamit mo ay start of your monthly period, count two weeks. So, kung ang ginamit mong pamantayan ng pagbibilang ay yung umpisa ng pagreregla. Kunwari, April 1 ka nag-umpisa ni regla. O, kailan ka mag-breast self-exam? Two weeks after that. Pero, kung ang ginawa mong pamantayan ay yung pagtatapos ng pagreregla, kailan natapos ang pagreregla? Kunwari, April 7. O, from April 7, one week lang ang bibilangin. Okay? So, here's the code. Pagka ang pinag-uusapan is a week after your monthly period, one week lang ang bibilangin. Pagka ang ginamit mong parameter ay two weeks, uh, uh, ang ginamit mong parameter ay the start of your monthly period, count two weeks. Okay? If it's the end of your monthly period, count one week. If it's the start of your monthly period, count two weeks. Ano yung purpose ng duration na yan, ng one week, ng two weeks na yan? Because by that time, it is believed that the hormones are already decreased. Therefore, the breasts are less tender, juicy, tasty, no? <laughs> are less tender, so it would be easier for you to palpate. So let's go back to the question now. Okay. Tinatanong, kailan daw mag self-breast exam? Ang premenopausal, postmenopausal. Seven days from the onset of menstruation. Mali ito. Kasi pag ang, ang ginamit mo onset, meaning the beginning of menstruation, dapat 14 days. So we put an X. Okay. Seven days after menstruation, yes, tama yan. Kasi after menstruation, pitong araw. Pag ang una, ang ginamit mo ay... Umpisa ng menstruation, labing apat na araw. So we put a check. Two weeks after the start of menstruation, yes, we put a check. Okay, tama si Rosalyn, pero kulang yung sagot mo, Rosalyn. Tatandaan mo, meron kang postmenopausal woman. Hindi na nireregla. Pag hindi na nireregla, gagami, gagawa pa rin siya ng self-breast exam. Pero papiliin mo siya ng isang araw kung kailan niya dapat gawin yun. Ayan. Okay, so tama at a fixed chosen day of the month. As frequently as possible, no. 
Okay. So, yan ang sagot. B, C, and D. Dumadali pag may functional concept. O ito, balik natin. What if ang tinanong lang pre-menopausal? Okay, yung nire-regla lang. Kailan ang best? A week after the start of menstruation, mali. Kasi ang ginamit mo start, dapat two weeks yan. Two weeks after the start of menstruation, yes. Okay? Itong letter D at a specified day of the month, para yan sa post-menopausal yan. Okay? Post-menopausal yan. Eh, ang meron tayo, pre-menopausal. Nire-regla pa. Yung letter D, para sa hindi na nire-regla. Okay, Aileen? Okay. So, tama ka, Sherlyn. So, what are the pointers for breast cancer? Hmm. Isa sa mga gusto kong i-highlight dito, kailangan matandaan nyo, ang risk factors. Okay? Pag sinabi natin risk factors, ito yung sample question. Which of the following statements on breast cancer are true? Apakarami. Once again, true or false lang yan na cleanaster. So therefore, okay, kailangan natin ng functional concept. Breast cancer can occur in both men and women. Breast cancer risk factors include the following. Paggamit ng contraceptives, lalo na yung may estrogen at progesterone. Age. Now, the single most important risk factor to cancer is advancing age. Like, when you reach age 55, you double your risk for cancer. Okay? So, meron bang preventive measure para hindi mag-cancer pag 55 na? <laughs> Yung mga nagsusuicide before 55, hindi <laughs> may kaka-cancer. Okay? But I'm not trying to tell you that that's an intervention. No. That's just actually putting together two things. Diba? The suicidal patient saka yung may cancer risk. Because sometimes cancer patients, become, they would become depressed and they will be at risk for suicide. Okay? Newly parity, those who have had their pregnancy at age 30 onwards, late na nabuntis. So yung mga magti-30 na, nandito sa klase natin, ha? Magti-30 ka na, hindi ka pa nabubuntis, ah, at risk ka for breast cancer. So anong advice ko sa'yo? Well, bago ka mag-30, i-offer mo na yan. <laughs> i-offer mo na yan. Baka sakaling <laughs> Pwede sabihin mo, pwede mo ba i-decrease ang risk ko? <laughs> of course, that's a joke. Okay, now, cancer in a first degree relative. Take note of this class, early minart. Minart is the first menstruation. Ang average age of minart ay usually 10 to 16. Pero sa Filipinos, 12 to 13. Late menopause or eventually, di ba, the absence of uh, menstruation occurs at age 40 to 50. Pero ang average age of menopause sa mga Pilipino ay 48. Take note that when a patient becomes menopausal, the hormone estrogen decreases. Ang lalaki naman, ang tawag dyan, andropause. Ang nagdi-decrease naman, testosterone. And then R, you have replacement therapy with estrogen or progesterone. So you have the code cancer. Okay, now, meron din tayong risk factors na kailangan kitang-kita. The most noticeable sign of cancer of the breast is the presence of breast lump or thickening. Okay, so merong uh, bukol sa suso. Okay, now, yung manifestations of breast cancer could include, remember the code, nipple, newly inverted nipple, inflammatory dimpling, peeling, scaling, crusting, or flaking, or orange peel appearance of the skin over the breast. Pigmentation and peeling of the skin, lump or thickening, you have an extra change in size, shape, appearance, and discharge, which simply means pwedeng may breast asymmetry, yung isa hanggang waist, <laughs> yung isa hanggang knees, hindi pantay yung breast, okay? Oo. So, ang tawag dyan, breast asymmetry, which could be indicative of breast cancer. So, in men, the common risk factors for breast includes, remember the code, look fit, liver disease, older age, obesity, Klinefelter syndrome is a chromosomal abnormality. Ano nangyari sa Klinefelters? Instead na XY ang combination ng chromosome mo, nagiging XXY. Ah, so ano itsura niyan, sir? Well, matangkad na tao yan, kaya lang maliit ang reproductive organs. I therefore conclude, hindi lahat ng matangkad mahaba. Okay? Kasi pag may Klinefelters, maliit ang reproductive organs because of femininization. Kasi may extra X chromosome sila. Okay? Then the patient with family history of breast cancer, usually first degree, exposure to estrogen, and the presence of disease of the testicles. Okay? Now, one of the most important things that you have to remember about breast self-exam is how frequently should it be done. From age 20 to 40 okay, and over, monthly yan. Okay? Pag self-breast exam. Meron tayong tiyatawag na clinical exam that's done by a nurse or a doctor or trained professional, pag age 20 to 39, that's done every three years. So pupunta ka sa doktor mo, ipapa-exam mo yung breast mo every three years. Okay? Okay. Ngayon, pag 40 years old ka na and over, 
every year ka nang pupunta sa doktor mo para magpa-breast clinical exam plus mammogram. Tatandaan mo, pag mammogram, avoid lotions, powders, deodorants. Why? Because this contains calcium oxalates. If they get exposed to the x-rays, it would give a false positive result. So you always have to tell them kahit herbal pa ang deodorant, bawal pag magpapamamogram. Okay? So when there is high risk for breast cancer due to family history, women should do self-breast exam at age 20. And then clinical breast exam every six months pag high risk is starting 10 years before the age at which the youngest family member was diagnosed. So kung yung family member mo nagkaroon ng breast cancer ng 30, 10 years before that, dapat nagpapaklinical breast exam ka na. Okay? So annual mammography starting 10 years before the age of the youngest family member with breast cancer, then tell the patient to consider MRI. So let's summarize that. Pag average ang risk ng patient for breast cancer, kailan sa magpapamomography? Every year from age 45 to 54. Pag average risk yan. Then every 10 years. Every two years for the next 10 years, according to the American Cancer Society. Pero pag high risk ang pasyente, they should begin mammography before age 40. Okay? So normally, pag average risk lang, nag-uumpisa 45 to 54 every year. Pero pag high risk, before age 40. Now, once the woman has... Um, is now 55, at least 55 years old and above, they should switch to mammograms every two years. Okay? Next functional concept, early menarche, meaning before 10 years of age, and late menopause, meaning above 54, okay, are known to increase a women's risk of having breast cancer. Okay, so balik tayo dun sa tanong kanina. Which of the following statements on breast cancer are true? Late menarche is a risk factor? Ah, 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 ah. May man nagsasagot daw ng yes, bumalik tayo, huwag niyong pagbalik ta rin. Early menarche dapat ang risk. Eh, nakalagay sa question, late menarche. O yung nagsagot dyan ng oo, oh, oh, wala na, wala na yung future ng question na yan, na mali ka na. Pag naman yung isa, na mali na lahat. Okay? So that should be an X. Having the first baby after age 35, yes, that's newly parity. Obesity is a risk factor, yes. Self-breast exam may help detect breast cancer, yes. It also affects men, yes. Okay. So, yung ating number six na napaka-importante. Okay? Number six, ang better natin is Sir Robert Mejia, who, from being a board top nature, he's a graduate of UP, cum laude, joined our faculty. Ito po yung faculty uh, members ng Ray Gapo system. Oh, I have my, my pillars, okay? Mga professors ko pa dati sa ASTN, Dr. Olyris and Ma'am Ellen Ramirez. And of course, um, mga cum laude graduates ng FAU, Prof. Jinky Fontanes and Dr. Richel Briones. They've been for more than 20 years with us. And of course, okay, yung ating mga junior lecturers like Prof. Jem. Oh, Ma'am Dang is our faculty consultant. She's a graduate of UP, okay, a board of nature of the nurse licensure exams. So yan yung aming team, okay? So briefcase number six. Ayan, neurocognitive disorders. Ano yung common problem nito? Wondering. Ano yung wondering? Um, these patients, pag sinabing wondering, naglalakad, tapos eventually nag, may loss of memory. Uh, restlessness, and then eventually they develop amnesia. So lakad ng lakad hanggang sa hindi na nila alam na saan sila. Okay? That's the main problem. Pag may neurocognitive disorders, whether the patient will have Alzheimer's or Creutzfeldt jacobs disease, okay, meron silang wondering. So anyone who is ambulatory and with memory problems is at risk for wondering. Therefore, what are the three things or <clears throat> problems that you need to address. Communication, because they have a tendency to have perseveration, paulit-ulit as sinasabi. Caution them, related to safety issues. Dapat ang kwarto ng may mga cognitive impairment, okay, bawal yung well-lit, dim-lit dapat. Kasi pag well-lit, they're sensitive to glare. It increases their risk for falls, okay? So ang kulay dapat ng bumbilya sa kwarto niyan, either red or yellow. At dapat ang stairway, okay, alternating red and yellow ang kulay, never blue and blue-green because those color waves would increase the risk for falls. And of course, comfort. Pero, pag tinanong ka, ano ang priority mo sa problema na yan? Wala dyan. The priority for any cognitive impairment would, should always be orientation because your problem is about cognition. Okay? So, ang priority mo, orientation. Second level lang ang safety. Okay? So, in the care of the client with wandering and confusion, the RN, you should plan for structured environment. Dapat may schedule. Implement activities at the times during which wandering may occur to divert their attention. 
refrain from correcting the patient, suggest, and then explore, then validate, take, uh, use validation as technique of communication. And then do not show them that the doors are already locked. They will become agitated. So places locks out of line of sight, supervise the client, and keep car keys out of sight because otherwise, ang pasyente magdadrive yan na hindi mo alam kung alam niya nasa ng susi. Never allow them to wear shoes while at at a facility or in the hospital, they should be wearing slippers. Kasi, ang may mga cognitive problems, they would be prone to misinterpretation. Pag sinabi, ay, nakasapatos ako, siguro aalis ako. Okay? So, nagkakaroon ng wondering. So, let's use those concepts to answer a question. Which of the following interventions is the highest priority of the nurse when providing care to a client with dementia who frequently wanders at nighttime? Is it A, leave the client alone once he goes inside his room? <clears throat> this is not a good intervention. If the patient is having difficulty of sleeping, you can first reassure the patient, okay, stay a few moments in the patient's room, and when the patient's able to sleep it off, then that's a time you can leave the patient alone. So... A is not a correct answer. B, show the client that doors have been locked. We said a while back, this would increase their agitation. C, turn all uh, lights off, including the night light, to remind the client that it is time to sleep. You can turn all the lights off, but not the night light. The night light should be there to decrease the risk for falls. Kasi pag nagbanyo yan at walang ilaw madilim, talagang uh, matutumba. Okay? That's not a good intervention. Remember, if a part of a possible answer is wrong, the entire option becomes wrong. And D, provide a structured set of activities in the late afternoon and evening. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Para hindi siya magkaroon ng wandering, bigyan mo siya ng schedule. Yan yung structured set of activities. Yan ang tinatawag. Tama ka, Queenie. Tama ka, Christian. Letter D ang sagot. Excellent. Marami tayong potential top notchers sa dito. Go, go, go tayo. Briefcase number seven. Okay. Ang bearer ng briefcase number seven ay ang pitong nilalang na ito. O di ba pito kami dyan? <laughs> Lagyan nyo na nga ng title, title ng picture na yan, mga katropa. Come on. <laughs> Anong title dyan? Sabi na is, is Snow White in the Seven Dwarf Down. <laughs> As in, si <it's> Snow White. <laughs> uh, at least hindi ako ang maputi ang mukha dyan. Bahala kayo. Ayoko magkasala. <laughs> <It's> no... <laughs> Kuya Will and the Wawa with Dancers. <laughs> Ay, madaya. Ako na lang si Kuya Will dyan kasi wala naman ng ibang pwede dyan. Eh. Ang pitong gata. <laughs> Torn among the roses daw. Pitong bebe. <laughs> the brain and the what? Seven shining stars. Oh, I like that. Oh, sige. Ano ba yung uh, briefcase number seven na topic? Ito pag-usapan natin. <laughs> Research. Ay, nako. Hindi pwedeng hindi nyo to alam. Research like communication and ethics threaded to yan. So from test 1 to test 5, kasi hodang ayaw mo meron yan. So research means re, again, search to look for. So research just simply means to look for again in a more scientific way to generate new body of knowledge. May tanong ako. Sir, ang research ba? Similar ba yan? <laughs> Sobra ka naman, Dave, Barney and Friends. <laughs> Hindi naman ako naka-violet. <laughs> okay. So pag-usapan natin ulit ang research. Okay, go. So is research different from evidence-based practice? It is. Okay? Research is primarily concerned with the generation of new knowledge. When you say evidence-based practice, it is concerned with the application of knowledge generated from research into clinical decision-making skills. Ah, nag-generate yung research in applying evidence-based practice. But take note, research is... Just one of the three components of evidence-based practice. Kasi yung tatlong core components ng evidence-based practice, okay, clinical expertise of the nurse, latest research findings, and client preference. So kasama ang nurse at kasama ang client if you talk about evidence-based practice. Therefore, paano pag may ganito kang tanong? Which of the following statements about nursing research are true? Okay, A, the first nurse, nurse researcher is Florence Nightingale. That's correct. The first nursing research journal was published in 50, 1952. That's correct. Its primary goal is to develop unique knowledge that's unique to nursing. Yes. It is a part of evidence-based practice. Yes, it is. Nightingale's first research focused on nursing practice. Hindi. Nightingale's first research focused on nursing education. So that's an X. Oh, kaya pag may ganyan, nakala mo, diretso tama. Huwag mong dinidiretso yung tama lahat. Okay? So you have to know what Nursing research is, so you have to define it. So it's a scientific process that validates and refines existing knowledge and generates new knowledge that directly influences nursing practice. Then, most studies focus on nurses, and usually, most knowledge used by nurses were developed by other disciplines. Okay? 
Hi, Vasnan. Okay, yung slides, may copy kayo ng slides na to, nasa PDF file. It will be sent to you. Don't worry. Okay, lahat yan, complete. So, if you are asked, what are the different historical landmarks in nursing research? Yan, si Florence Nightingale as the first nurse researcher. Yung initial research niya sa nursing education. Yung first journal, nursing research, published in 1952. Okay? So, and the clinical nursing research expanded in the 70s. Okay. Brief case number eight representing, okay, of course, the legacy of my system. It's always above 90% passing rate, usually 100% for a couple of groups, okay. Number eight, eye and ear disorders. Sir, sa ang test namin aaralin yan? Um, from my analysis, most of the eye and ear disorders, usually sensation perception yan, kasama ng neuro sa test five. Kasi dyan yung part ng rehabilitation, okay? So take note, ha? Eye and ear disorders, test five. So you can study cataract, glaucoma, retinal detachment, uh, ear disorders, okay? You can study Meniere's disease, di ba? Ano daw ba yung cause ng Meniere's? Di ba? Pagtanda, Meniere's. <laughs> Hindi, Meniere's disease, autosclerosis, nasa test five yan. O, yan, natawa na naman sila. <laughs> Thanks in advance, Dr. Gapos, for giving us. Oo, more to come. <laughs> okay, so let me just give you an example. Sir, paano namin aaralin? Yan yung usually ang problema ng mga Gen Z tsaka mga millennials eh. Alam yung aaralin, hindi alam paano aaralin. O ganito yan. Pag nag-aral kayo ng disorders, you have to go through all the facts that will empower you to explain it to your client. Ah, hindi pwedeng mas marami alam yung pasyente kaysa sa'yo. Example, you begin with the definition. Vision loss refers to partial or complete loss of vision. Then you have to know what intervention should be implemented associated with that problem. So placing things in front of a client with loss of vision may enable them to utilize their light perception, color perception, or form perception. Therefore, pwede mong ilagay sa harap pala ng may visual problem yung binibigay mong object. Oo, kasi naaaninag naman nila yun. Eh. Hindi nawawala yung ability nilang maaninag. Okay, using that concept now to answer a question. Let's use it. Which of the following interventions is most appropriate when providing care to a client with macular detachment? Macula pertains to a part of the eye, okay, that's responsible for central vision. So pag nagkaroon ng macular detachment, you lose your central vision. So ang problema ng macular detachment, may problema ka sa sense of sight. Okay, dapat ang intervention mo related sa sense of sight. A, use communication board. Communication board is used for patients with, for example, expressive aphasia, yung may tumor sa frontal lobe, may CVA affected ang frontal lobe. Yun yun. Uh, macular detachment is not about the use of communication board. B, allow the client to lip read. Again, this is due to a patient with impaired hearing. Nagli lip read. So that's not associated with vision loss, associated with macular detachment. Again, letter B is incorrect. C, place things in front of the client while giving instructions about how foods are placed on the plate. We can consider technique, technique. Look, mahaba, longest. Pero hindi ko sinasabi na yan ang gagawin mo sa board exam, ha? na maghanap ng mahaba. Tapos yung mahaba, pinili mo na. 30 minutes, tapos ka na. Tapos sabi mo, ba't ang bilis mo naman? Naghanap ako ng mahaba. Huwag <laughs> mong gagawin yon. Huwag mong kinakahon yung mas strategies na tinuturo natin. Remember, these are the secrets I developed in my more than 25 years na nakatutok sa nurse licensure exam. Kaya't wala po akong ginawang pastime kundi mag-take ng exams at ipasa. O di ba masarap sa pakiramdam? D, limit questions to those that can only be answered with as yes or no. Letter D is an intervention for a patient with expressive aphasia. When you talk of expressive aphasia, this is common among clients okay, with disturbance in the mo Broca's motor speech area located in the frontal lobe. Such is the case in patients with stroke in which the frontal lobe is affected. So letter D is about expressive aphasia. It's not about macular detachment. So the answer, therefore, is letter C. Yan. So bukod sa mga ganyan, ano pa ba ang pag-aaralan? Matuto ka rin mag-compare and contrast. Like for example, in age-related macular degeneration, macular detachment, and retinal detachment, loss of vision occurs. So sa tatlong sakit na ito, ano yung common problem? Dapat matutunan mo yan. So loss of vision. Ngayon, lahat ba ng macular disease common lang sa elderly? Hindi. Sabi ng functional concept natin, there is a form of a disease called Stargardt disease that occurs in children and adults. So it's a form of macular degeneration in children and adults. Okay? Now, <clears throat> there are three parts of the eyes. Usually, kasi tumatagal kayo mag-aral, inaaral yung buong anatomy and physiology. Hindi ganun. 
Okay? Kasi part and parcel lang ng exam ang anatomy. Huwag kayong mag-ubos ng oras sa anatomy. Katulad nito. Nag-aaral tayo about eye disorders. Pag-aaralan mo lang yung part ng eyes na affected sa sakit. For example, pag-retinal detachment, ano ba affected? Retina. Diba? It contains photoreceptors, rods, and cons. Nasaan ba ang retina ito? Yan. Yeah, Lining the back and sides of the eyes. Yan. Retina. Okay? Then, pag-aralan mo din ang macula. Ano ba yung macula? It's a, it's a pigmented area near the center of the retina. O, oh, ayan yan. It's an oval-shaped pigmented area near the center of the retina. That's your macula. So, ito ang affected sa macular degeneration at age-related macular degeneration. O, oh, punta pa tayo ng detalye. Inside the macula, you have your fovea. Ang tawag nga dyan, fovea centralis. It's a depression or pit within the macula and it provides the greatest visual acuity. So, pag nagkaroon ka ng macular detachment, ito yung naaapektuhan, the fovea. Kaya nagkakaroon ka ng loss of central vision. Yun ang difference. Pag retinal detachment, loss of peripheral vision. Kasi nasa gilid ng mata. Pag macular problems, it could be macular detachment or age-related macular degeneration, loss of central vision. Ah, pero ang outstanding risk factor niyan, common yan sa mga elderly, mga tumatanda. Nagkakaroon talaga ng maraming sakit pag matanda. So therefore, if we think about loss of vision, think about retinal detachment and macular detachment and how these two would differ. Sabi nga natin, pag retinal detachment, detachment, loss of peripheral vision, macular detachment, loss of central vision. Pero pareho ng symptoms yan. Visual floaters. The patient would say, I see floating spots in front of my eyes. I see cobwebs in, in front of my eyes. I see veil-like structures in front of my eyes. Those are descriptions of visual floaters. Then the patient would also have blurred vision. Okay? And take note, Pareho din ng risk factor yan. Mas maaga nga lang a detachment. Ang onset, 50 years old and above. Macular detachment, above 60. And in both conditions, if one eye is affected, the other eye may also be at risk. Okay? Although, pag retinal detachment, you have additional risk factors like family history of eye disorders and cataract surgery. Okay? Ngayon, paano kung yung macula lang ang affected? May dalawang condition na common. Age-related macular degeneration due to aging and macular detachment, which could, which could be associated with aging and trauma. Okay? So in both conditions, macula ang affected. Tinignan natin kanina yung macula, nasa gitna, di ba? Kaya loss of central vision. So here, intact ang peripheral vision ang may problema yung central vision. Sir, paano namin malalaman yon? Okay, ganito yan. Kung nakaharap sa iyo yung pasyente at ang dinidescribe lang niya, ang ganda ng hikaw mo, ang ganda ng buhok mo, ang ganda ng tenga mo, wala siyang masabi tungkol sa mata mo, sa ilong mo, sa lips, it's because hindi niya nakikita yung gitna ng muka. Ah, that's loss of central vision. Hmm. Oh, yung loss of peripheral vision, nakikita niya ang ganda ng mata mo, ang ganda ng ilong mo. Hindi niya ma-describe yung tenga mo, hindi niya ma-describe yung buhok mo kasi may loss of peripheral vision. Pero ibang klase na ibang kaso naman 'yon pag wala ka talagang buhok. <laughs> Wala talaga madi-describe sa iyo, 'di ba? So yung mga nawawalan ng buhok, huwag kayong malungkot kasi bukod tanging kayo lang ang may nagagawa na hindi nagagawa ng may buhok. Sir, so, ano 'yon? Aba, yung mga kalbo yun lang ang bukod tanging kahit nakayuko, taas noo. <laughs> Okay, let's go back to our discussions. Ano ba yan? Ano na pumapasok sa utak natin at baka mag-brown out dito sa amin sa alabang eh. Hindi ko ito matapos. Okay, kaya medyo mabilis ako kasi ang Miramcos not cooperating. Naka-red alert uli kami. So, you have intact peripheral vision. It doesn't cause blindness but it would definitely lead to visual problems. Okay? Huwag naman daw sana mag-brown out, sabi nila. Okay, so take note. Pag... Age-related macular degeneration, dahil nga dahil yan sa pagtanda, walang gamot. Meron lang treatment. Babagal lang yung progression ng sakit like vitamin C, E, beta-carotene, mineral zinc and copper. And then, naglalagay ng implantable miniature telescope. Take note, pag age-related macular degeneration, walang gamot. Kasi dahil yan sa aging. Pag macular detachment, ito. Common sa above 60 din, pero ito, merong treatment. May paraan. So, ginagawa dyan surgery, vitrectomy, removal of the vitreous humor. It's the gel-like structure that gives shape to the eyes. Okay? So, pag tinanggal yung vitreous humor, the retina becomes accessible for laser treatment. Kaya pag macular detachment, okay, nagagamuan, natitreat yan with laser surgery. Yan. Okay. So, 
Anong risk factors sa age-related macular degeneration? Genetic factors, gender, smoking, obesity, high fat diet, light skin complexion, and light eye color, yung mga blue eye. Now, <clears throat> paano malalaman na merong age-related macular degeneration dahil tumatanda na? Meron tinatawag na drusen. Drusen is a clump yellowish pigment. Okay, found in the retina. Tawag doon drusen. Okay, so there are two common tests done. Your arm's grid in which a client will be asked to look at the pattern of straight line that resembles a checkboard. Ipa-describe mo kung straight line ba yan o pag antingin niya wavy, at least siya for age-related macular degeneration. And of course, the more direct test would be angiography in which a dye is injected to the vein followed by visualization of the retinal blood vessels in which case you need to assess the client for allergy kasi gumamit ng dye. So, assess for allergy, ha? Pag mayaman yung pasyente. Tawag doon allergy. Pag mahirap, ang tawag doon galis. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Okay. So, in age-related macular degeneration, you can have dry and wet. What's the difference? Sa dry macular degeneration, you have gradual loss of central vision. Sa wet macular degeneration, it is sudden and it is severe. Okay? Loss of vision. Okay. Now, pwede bang yung dry mauwi sa wet? Yes. Pero mas common ang dry. 10% lang ang wet macular degeneration, pero 90% ng 10% na yan leads to blindness. So, ang more common cause ng blindness ay wet macular degeneration. Tanong. Okay, I have a question. Ano ang treatment nito? Pag dry macular degeneration, panlalabo lang ng mata. Therefore, I-refer mo siya sa optometrist. Okay? Okay. I-refer mo siya sa optometrist. Bakit optometrist? The optometrist is a doctor of optometry who specializing in prescribing kung anong grado ng eyeglasses. Pag may wet macular degeneration, initially may panlalabo ng bata, i-refer mo siya sa optometrist. Pero sa late stage, i-refer mo na siya sa ophthalmologist. Anong difference? Ophthal ophthalmologist is a doctor of medicine. Optometry is a doctor of optometry. Yung nagme-measure lang ng eyeglass, optician ang tawag doon. Okay, ngayon. Sa wet macular degeneration, mas severe siya, kaya kailangan mo both ng optometrist at ophthalmologist. An ophthalmologist is a medical doctor specializing in eye diseases. They can perform eye surgery. Okay? And then you need occupational therapists to assist the patient in their fine motor skills that they will need to develop when they develop gradual loss of vision. Okay? Tatandaan, ang wet macular degeneration leads to permanent blindness. Okay? Although initially, pareho ng symptoms ang dalawa. Hindi mo malalaman kung dry or wet. Bakit? May blurred vision, may difficulty reading fine prints, and then may poor color perception. Okay. Tanong. Sir, paano yung rehab ng eye surgery? Kunwari, tinanong ko sa test 5. Anong activity ang allowed at anong activity ang bawal? Okay. Example, sa retinal detachment. Allowed ba yung pasyente manood ng TV? Remember, in retinal detachment, avoid sudden eye movement. Uh, watch, in watching TV, it's the image on the screen that moves. It is not your eyes that move. Not unless ganito ka manood ng, ng TV, di ba? Tumitingin sa left, sa right. Ibig sabihin, dalawa TV mo, dalawa station tinitingnan mo. So, focus yung eyes mo. So, watching TV is allowed. Kasi it doesn't cause abrupt change in eye movement. Ah, I-contrast ikon, natin. E pa paano pag reading books? Allowed ba yan after... Retinal detachment surgery. When you read books, okay, the texts are static. Ah, the texts are static. So, hindi pwede na pag nag-read ka ng book, eh yung mata mo hindi gagalaw at ginaganyan mo. <laughs> so, in essence, when you're reading books, your eyes are moving from left to right. So, you are having sudden eye movement. Kaya, ah, yung reading books ay hindi allowed. Ang allowed watching TV. Yan yung mga ganyang mga concept, ang mga dapat pinag-aaralan mo pag nag-board exam ka. So dry AMD can lead to the wet form. And the drugs, okay, wag masyado tayo sa drugs. Uh, you have your rabinizumab, okay, bevacizumab. This would usually block the formation of abnormal blood vessels in the eyes. Then laser therapy to destroy abnormal blood vessels. And photodynamic laser therapy, which involves administration of light-sensitive drug known as vertiporphine or visodine followed by laser treatment. 
Okay, so therefore, take note, majority of individuals who are visually impaired have some residual vision. So lahat ng nabubulag, meron pa rin light perception, color perception, or form perception. May pag-aninag na tinatawag. So nakakaramdam pa rin sila kahit papano. Okay, so to communicate with clients with loss of vision, implement strategies that will increase their utilization of light perception, color perception, or form perception. Okay, so anong gagawin mo? Identify yourself upon entering the room. Ensure adequate lighting, avoid glare, face the person when speaking, use touch, explain procedures to be performed, describe the surrounding, explain the location of food using the face of the clock method like nasa 12 o'clock position, nasa 3 o'clock position, nasa 6 o'clock position ng ulam. Then provide recorded or large print books, music, braille materials or other materials. Then inform the client when they are leaving the room. When ambulating, take note. So you ambulate side by side, you walk ahead of the patient but you allow the patient to hold on your uh, upper arm, okay? And provide verbal cues for doors like my pinto, okay? My furniture or any obstacles along the way. So using those concepts now, which of the interventions can the nurse delegate to the nursing assistant when providing care to a client with visual impairment, okay? Select all that apply. Providing assistance in feeding the client, yes. Gagamit ka ng clock position, okay? Obtaining routine vital signs, yes. Okay, assist in ambulating the client, yes. Repositioning the client on bed, yes. And obtaining urine from the client's indwelling catheter. Remember, when you talk of delegation, alin ang pwedeng iutos? You do not delegate assessment, teaching, evaluation, any part of the nursing process, and you do not delegate sterile procedures. Yung pagkuha ng urine from the indwelling catheter is a sterile procedure. You do not delegate that. So that's an X. Ayan. Do not delegate ATIS. Assessment, teaching, evaluation, and sterile procedure. Okay, concept number nine. Okay, well, this reminds me of pangarap ko lang yan dati, maging author ng MOSB. And... I've been blessed to be the first Filipino to have authored a nursing review book from the world's number one publisher. At eventually, yung librong sinulat ko nanalo sa International Book Awards. Okay? Napakaraming blessing. Okay? Pero this book is now undergoing revision. Okay? Uh, the new edition will come out anytime soon. Okay? So, briefcase number nine. Negligence versus malpractice. Wag kakalimutan to, okay? Either test one or test five concept. So what's the difference? Negligence is an act of omission or commission. May ginawa ka na hindi mo dapat gawin or may hindi ka ginawa na dapat mong gawin. Okay, and this is usually a violation committed by person with ordinary prudence. Yung ordinaryong mamamayan, okay? Malpractice, okay, is professional negligence. What does this mean? It's a violation committed by a person with professional duty. Okay. Let me explain. Here's an example. Kunwari may pasyente na uminom ng antihypertensive. Uminom siya ng antihypertensive, nakalimutan niyang ibalik yung side rails niya into an up position. Pumasok ang janitor. Okay? Hindi naman tinignan ng janitor kasi ang focus ng janitor ay paglilinis. Nahulog yung pasyente sa kama. Okay? So, ano ang kaso doon? Bilang human, bilang tao, dapat tumulong yung janitor. Kaso nga lang, hindi niya nagawa. So there's an act of omission. Pero dahil wala namang duty yung janitor na saang mag ng side rails, the case is negligence. It is committed by a person with ordinary prudence, ordinaryong mamamayan. Okay? Paano nagiging malpractice? Pag ikaw ay professional. So that's professional negligence, okay? So you are duty bound professionally to provide, okay, or to to provide safe care to the patient. So kung ang pumasok dun sa kwarto ay yung nurse at siya ang hindi nakagawa ng pagtaas ng side rails, then ang cause ang ang case malpractice. However, pwede pa rin namang idemanda ng pasyente ang nurse ng negligence. Okay, let's let's identify the four elements of negligence. Pag nagdemanda ka ng negligence, kailangan maprove mo yung duty, breach of duty, causation, and damages. Example, here's a question. A client filed a case against a nurse for negligence. So the client alleged that instead of her maintenance antihypertensive, the nurse wrongly administered vitamin C to rectify the error. The nurse administered the antihypertensive medication as soon as the error has been detected. The client did not suffer from any untoward reaction. The nurse won the case due to the absence of which element of negligence? Jubayan sa Ano ang hindi na fulfill? May duty ba yung nurse? Meron. May breach of duty? Meron. May hindi siya nagawa, di ba? May causation? Yes. Ang cause ng injury, yung hindi pag-inom ng gamot, ay dahil nakalimot yung nurse. Pero, meron bang injury sa pasyente? Look, did not suffer from any untoward reaction? Wala. So, kaya nanalo yung nurse, kulang ng isang elemento yung kaso. And that is damages or 
Okay, and last but not the least, okay, showing you now our 25 years celebration with all of our mentees, the center, okay. Ventilator, simply lang to. Two general types, positive pressure and negative pressure. Pag positive pressure, kailangan mo na intubation. And the tracheal tube or tracheostomy tube in which the positive pressure is forced into the client's lung. Okay, the gas is forced into the client's lung. Sa negative pressure, the body is in an enclosed okay, uh, environment. And the negative pressure within the enclosed environment causes the chest wall to expand, which pulls air into the lungs. I'll show you the picture. This is hyperbaric oxygen therapy. This could be a form of your negative pressure ventilator. Yeah. So around the patient, my negative pressure, it pulls the lungs out and then air goes into the lungs. Okay. Four basic modes of ventilator setting. Assist control. Kailan mong alam saan ito ginagamit sa ICU patient. The patient will have a set respiratory rate. SIMB or synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. Ginagamit ito pag post-op yung pasyente. But the patient can breathe independently. TV will be inhaled by the patient. Oh, hindi yan yung TV na television set. <laughs> TV tidal volume. Ilan ang amount ng tidal volume? 400 to 800 ml. It's the amount of air that goes in, in, the, in and out of the lungs with each breath. Okay? So 400 to 800 ml. So independent, nagagawa ng pasyente yun. Then, APRV, airway pressure release ventilation. That's used for ARDS. Ito yung minsan ginagamit na sa may mga covid Okay, patients can still breathe spontaneously, pero pag nagka nahirapan na, eventually, nakasedate na yung pasyente. So, pressure support is used for weaning the patient from the ventilator, but there's usually a risk for respiratory acidosis for this type of setting. Okay? Now, last two concepts na gusto kong i-highlight. Ventilator alarms. Pag high pressure ang nag-alarm, ibig sabihin, there's an obstruction. Naipon yung plema sa tube. So, you need to suction the airway. Because this could cause the patient to cough. Pag yung low pressure nag-alarm due to disconnection of or extubation, reconnect or extubate as necessary. Okay, so let's have uh, a functional concept. When the high pressure alarms of a ventilator sounds, it indicates obstruction, the priority is suction. When the low pressure alarm of a ventilator sounds, it indicates disconnection or air leak. So you have to check the connection. So let's use that to answer a simple question. While providing nursing care to a client on a ventilator, the high pressure alarm sounds, which of the following interventions, the priority of the nurse. So high pressure alarm, so there's an obstruction, suction the client's airway. Sabi nila, priority airway. Ayan. Okay, so that ends my session. More to come in our series because the former chair of the Professional Regulatory Board of Nursing will be coming in. So thank you very much for listening to me. But before I end, let me be the bearer of good news. I have scholarships for 50 slots. Okay, here's one of my scholars from my local to NMAT and now NCLEX. I pass them all through the Ray Gapo system. That's Elmera May Joy Toledo. Okay, USRN from De La Salle Health Sciences Institute. She's a cum laude graduate and of course a board top notcher. So the coverage of the scholarship, a tuition fee libre for NLE, NCLEX, and IELTS. Then application fees then for NCLEX, which usually amounts to 70,000, is being taken care of. Plus visa sponsorship expenses kasi kompleto yan hanggang pagpunta ng America. So if you are interested to avail of the scholarship requirements, just send an email to me personally. Attach a copy of your certificate of grades. Okay, and three things I leave you with. You can't do everything. You need mentors. That's why we're here. Thank you for listening to us. Then focus is everything. Don't look back. Don't look to the sides. Focus to the task at hand. And the third and most important thing, which I leave you with, let God do the rest. So I'm blessing you. Ito yung aking small santo niño. Na napulot ko more than... <laughs> Mag to 30 years ago now when I took my board exam. So I hope everybody who's looking at this at the moment gets blessed. So maraming maraming salamat po for your time. Thank you and see you in the next series sponsored by Health Carousel.